So the new Rocket League Season 8 has begun and we've got arguably one of the best seasons to date. The new Rocket Pass is looking good with the new Honda Civic and a few new decals. By the way, if you're looking to buy the Battle Pass, make sure you use code one eyed Go at checkout to help support me. Psyonix also added the new map Sovereign Heights which looks absolutely incredible. However, my favourite feature of the Season 8 is that they got rid of this abomination of a map Starbase Aftermath. Nothing frustrated me more than being on a losing streak and then load my next game into this map. But with a new season comes a new motivation to grind ranked and improve. I've even started playing once more because that's always the game mode I struggle with. I have a personal goal to get to SSL before the Unreal Engine 5 version of the game and even though we have no clue when that's happening, what I do know is that time is running out so I'm always trying to improve the best I can. And I always want to take you guys on this journey of improvement with me so that's why last month I gave you guys what I think are the best workshop maps to improve and I also created a training routine based on those maps. However, I know that with workshop maps, console players can't use them, and more recently, Epic Games players can no longer download them. So I knew that there were people looking for other ways to improve and rank up, so in this video, I will be going through what I believe are the best training packs to improve your mechanics and rank up fast. There will be 5 training packs to improve your offense and there will be 5 training packs to improve your defense and they will get progressively more difficult so I suggest you give these training packs a try and see which fits your skill level. However, I do think almost all of these training packs can benefit all ranks. But without further ado, let's get right into the video. Now before we get into the training packs, I want to put out a quick disclaimer for anyone that has Baki's mod. Even though this is mainly aimed for console players, if you're trying this out on PC, there are some benefits that can help you improve faster. And that is to go into the custom training tab and enable custom training variants. Having this on slightly alters the training packs and gives you more of a variety of different shots. So instead of hitting the same shot over and over again, each time it will be slightly different. So you'll be hitting the same shot but with slightly different speeds and at slightly different angles. And this just boosts your muscle memory by tenfold. So if you are able to, I highly suggest you turn it on because you won't regret it. Okay, to start with, we have a training pack called Why You Suck Shadow Defense. And this is exactly what it says it is, Shadow Defense. Shadow Defense is a skill that everyone should have at least attempted to learn at around diamond ranks. However, if you learn it before, then it's even more beneficial. Essentially, this is where your opponents have control of the ball and instead of facing them head on, you want to turn and basically mirror the direction your opponent is facing. Doing so puts you in a very strong position to defend the play, especially in one-on-one -on -one situations. This training pack basically has you positioned in a shadow defense situation and all you have to do is save the ball. But not only do you want to just save the ball, you want to put the ball in a safe spot where your opponent cannot immediately shoot again. So your best bet is to hit the ball into the corners of the field. Whatever you do, make sure you don't hit the ball in the center of the field, especially when it's close to your net. Because if you do that in a game, especially a 1v1, you're most likely going to get scored on in the next few seconds. So your key focus of this training pack is to save it into the corners. Defense training pack number two is a little similar but a little more difficult and that is the uncomfortable saves training pack. This training pack is a little similar to shadow defense, however this pack does its very best to put you in awkward situations that you're not used to doing consistently. And I think this pack is great, especially for ranks from champ and under. And this is because I'm a huge believer in the more uncomfortable situations you put yourself in, the faster you will grow as a player. And like with the shadow defense training pack, you want to not only save the ball, but clear it to a safe space where you can't get scored on. So if you find that in your ranked games that you always get caught in awkward positions on defense, then I highly suggest you give this training pack a try. Now training pack number 3 is Kevpa Wall Power Clears. And wall power clears are very overlooked and they are actually a lot harder than people think. Essentially, you have to hit the ball just after it bounces off the wall or the backboard so that it booms across the field. Now this is something I struggled with for a very long time and honestly, I still struggle with it now. So I spent a lot of time using this training pack. Now with this training pack, if you have Baki's mod, you want to go to Kevbert's video on it and follow the instructions on there. He basically 
basically gives you a custom training variance for this training pack to make it more of a game like situation. And with this training pack, I basically gave myself a boundary for saying that I have to hit the ball past the halfway line without it bouncing. And that meant I had to avoid hitting the ceiling or the walls when clearing the ball. If you're on console or you don't have access to Baki's mod, then I highly suggest you use this alternative called Way Power Clears. This training pack isn't just about wall power clears, but just power clears in general. So there are some that you have to hit from the wall and some you have to hit from the ground. But the rules still stand, so I suggest you still try to clear every wall past the halfway line without it bouncing. These two training packs might be difficult for the lower ranks, but I still suggest you give them a try now instead of letting them off like I did. Now training pack 4 is called Recover on the Backboard, and this one is sort of a huge step up in mechanics from training packs 1 and 2. So instead of saving the ball into the corner like you would do with those training packs, you want to save the ball up towards your backboard, then you need to recover on the backboard and take control of the ball again. Whether that means you clear it further down the pitch, or you make a play like an air dribble. This training pack is more aimed at the higher ranks. At lower ranks, just saving the ball into the corner is enough, however in GC and above, save Saving the ball can mean a loss of possession, and that starts to build up more pressure on your defense the more it happens. So it's important that you learn to control the ball while you're on defense so you can take the pressure off your teammates and yourself. So for this training pack, I think you should just get creative with it. Once you have control of the ball in your backboard, you can do what you want with it. Practice air dribbling, keeping it close, or clearing it far into the opponent's half. You never know when you're gonna need each one, so I suggest you just practice all of them. Now training pack number 5, and the final training pack for defense is back wall air dribbles. Now this training pack is the most difficult. Even I now struggle with consistently getting this training pack. This was created by Musty to control the ball coming towards your backboard and air dribble it outwards towards the opponent's half of the field. This is an extremely effective skill to have. Being able to transition from your backboard to your opponent's half can be insanely beneficial. Similar to the situation in the last training pack, but if you were just to clear the ball in the higher ranks, you risk losing possession and creating more pressure on your team on defense. However, being able to air dribble from your backboard not only lets you keep control of the ball, but also allows your teammates to get boost and reset. So it just alleviates a lot of pressure. So for this training pack, all you want to do is control the ball with your first touch and air dribble it out. And I would keep the same rule of aiming for the halfway line without it bouncing. This training pack not only helps with your defense transition, but it also helps with your first touch. So if you're at a higher skill level, then I definitely suggest you use this pack. Now those are the 5 training packs for defense. I chose to do these first because people tend to neglect it. They see all the flashy double taps and flip resets and forget the other half of Rocket League. In my opinion, it is way more important to be able to control the ball on your own backboard than it is to be able to flip reset. So I recommend you take a look at these training packs and implement them into your daily training. Now that I've shown you my favorite defensive training packs, it's time to move on to offensive training packs. These will mostly focus on being able to score off as many opportunities as you can, and also increasing your creativity in the opponent's third of the field. And like the defense training packs, these packs will all get progressively more difficult. So to start with, the first training pack is called Ground Shots. Now this is probably one of my favorite training packs. It's a 50 shot training pack with all the shots being ground shooting opportunities. Now these shots are all pretty simple, but that doesn't make them easy. All of these shots are challenging, but if you want to be the best player you can be, then this shooting training pack is definitely something you want to add to your routine. This pack is full of different situations, shots off the volley, shots off the bounce, and more. And in my opinion, there isn't a better training pack for shooting consistency. Ground shooting is a skill that no matter what level you are, whether bronze or even pro level, you always have room for improvement. If you're a lower rank and struggle with shooting, then to start with I would focus on just being able to score each shot. Then after that I would focus on being able to shoot the ball off the ground, meaning you hit the ball and it goes in before it bounces. And this is so you can focus more on the power of your shots. After that, you really want to focus on choosing where to place your shots. Start to think about shooting to the corners and placing it where you want it to be. Overall, this training pack is probably one of the best packs I've ever used, and I will continue to use this pack no matter what rank I am. Okay, now offense pack number two is aerial shots. Now technically these are two different training packs but I'm putting them as one because they're in the same category and could easily be combined into one. In these training packs are aerial shots pass and aerial shots redirect. Now these training packs are pretty self-explanatory. Aerial shots pass focuses on situations where you're being passed a higher ball from your teammate and aerial shots redirect focuses more on unorthodox angles that are likely to catch the defense off guard. 
Shots like these are ones that I never really gave the time of day when I was in the lower ranks. But now where I'm reaching GC2 levels, I regret not putting in that time back then. Because shots like these are very useful in high speed games. If you can't hit a shot off a pass or you can't hit redirects, then you are missing out on a lot of scoring opportunities. And the higher the ranks you get, the less opportunities you get to score. And in the lower ranks, even if the chance you get a pass from your teammates is low, you never know when you might get a high aerial opportunity and these training packs help with that also. So using these training packs can be very beneficial for all ranks. Offensive training pack number 3 is going to be a training pack called War Shots. And this is just a huge training pack with different situations where you need to jump off the wall to shoot the ball and score. Being able to score from the wall is a skill that separates low champ diamond players to the high champ grand champ players. A lot of the time if the ball is on the wall, most people just struggle to even hit the ball. So being able to not only hit the ball but shoot it towards the net is a very important skill in Rocket League and it will catch a lot of people out of position in your ranked games. This training pack also allows the higher ranks to get creative. Sometimes just shooting the ball straight at the net when there are players there is a bad idea, but this training pack gives you all sorts of opportunities to maybe hit a double tap or control the ball and make more of a mechanical play. So the wall shots training pack is essential if you want to elevate your gameplay to that next level. Speaking of double taps, training pack number 4 is going to be Kevpert's advanced double taps. Now I've always said being able to read the wall and the backboard is something that can exponentially improve the speed of your gameplay. And this training pack is all about setting up your own double taps. So not only does this training pack improve your ability to read the wall, it also helps with your aerial control and the control of your first touch. Now, like with a lot of Kevpur training packs, this one also has a custom training variant that he explains how to set up with Baki's mod in his video, but the link for that video will be in the description. But if you're on console or don't have access to Baki's mod, then the alternative to this training pack is Double Tap Playground. These two training packs are very similar and all just focus on you scoring double taps. So if your aerial control is strong enough, then you should definitely try out these training packs because they're super fun. Now for the final training pack in this video, it's going to be the Delayed Flicks training pack. All this training pack is, is you have the ball on your car in different angles and the aim is to flick it into the net. And I know what you're thinking, this training pack isn't as difficult as some of the other ones. So why did you pick it as the last training pack? And my answer to that is, the opportunity to get creative in this training pack is endless. To start with, I used this pack for 45 and 90 degree flicks, and these mechanics are some of the best mechanics I ever learned. Especially in one-on-one -on -one situations, the amount of power you can generate from these flicks is incredible. And even if you're already comfortable with those flicks, you can learn all sorts of different flicks. Musty flicks and breezy flicks aren't just flashy, they can be used in a lot of situations and are very viable in high ranks. But this training pack can not only be used for flicks, but also for air dribbles from the ground. And this mechanic is incredibly difficult to learn, but can be extremely effective if you know how to do it. Once you have the air dribble, you can thread in the bump, flip reset, or really you can do anything you like as long as you have the mechanics for it. So if you want an opportunity to just learn new mechanics, then this is the training pack I like to use. Well there you have it, 10 training packs that will skyrocket your mechanics and help you rank up fast. 5 defense and 5 offense packs all with different difficulties. Just a quick reminder to turn on custom training variants if you have Barkley's mod. But if you're on console, don't worry because these training packs are still extremely helpful no matter what rank you are and all the training pack codes will be in the description, also the link to the Kevpert videos will be down there also. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you found a training pack or even multiple that you incorporate into your daily routine. This game is about defense as well as offense so remember to get a good mix of the training packs to get improvement all around the pitch. If you did enjoy that video I would love if you could hit that like button and if you want to see more from me please press subscribe. I love reading feedback in the comments so make sure to comment down below also. The support I've gotten on my YouTube YouTube journey is absolutely mind blowing and I can't thank you guys enough for it. My dream is to be able to make this YouTube channel my main job and I couldn't do it without you guys support. But that's all for me for now, I'll see you guys next time.